Eugene, Oregon, and Jane Sanders Stadium has the attention of the softball world this weekend and tonight. It's where the top two teams in the Pac-12, number two UCLA and number three Oregon, will duel for the upper hand of one of the nation's marquee conferences. Good evening and thanks for listening along. Jordan Brenner alongside Michael Strike joining you. Michael, the defending national champion Bruins have been a steam engine this season. And they look just as good, if not better, than the team that took the trophy in 2019. This series here, though, could be their stiffest test of the season. They're playing four games. Three of them will count for conference against Oregon, the only team to beat them this season. Yeah, Jordan and UCLA might have some rust to shake off in this one. They've been crushing teams, like you said, but they've also been quiet uh, since March 19th. They haven't played a game. Now, granted, they're 19 and one, but they've had a series of cancellations, so it's been quite a while since they've gotten to play a game. Meanwhile, Oregon coming right off of a really hard fought Pac-12 series against Oregon State, where they took three out of four and two out of three in conference play. Head coach Melissa Lombardi reiterated throughout her press conference this week that Oregon is preparing for this series like they would any other. Though at the end of her presser, Michael, she paused for a second. She gave a big smile and she said to her team, they know this is a big weekend. How big, Michael, is it? Well, there's an argument to be made that this is the biggest series to date in Melissa Lombardi's three-year tenure as head coach. Oh, absolutely, Jordan. I mean, this is quite literally a battle for first in the conference. Whoever wins today will be first place heading into tomorrow. And the Pac-12 softball season doesn't have necessarily a championship game at the end of it. So we may look back at this series and be able to say that these were the games that decided who was the Pac-12 champion at the end of the year, which, like we said, would be Melissa Lombardi's first. So no doubt, this is a huge series. And for the next two hours, the country will be watching here at James Sanders Stadium. These two teams met up in late February down in Tempe, Arizona for two non-conference matchups. They split those two games. We're yet to see these teams at full strength. Back in February, February UCLA was missing a two-time National Player of the Year in Rachel Garcia today. She is back, she's the DP and hitting third, not throwing in this first game. And well, Oregon today will be a little bit shorthanded, though we can let our listeners know, Alyssa Brito, who missed last weekend against the Bees, she is hitting third, she is back in. Hannah Delgado is a no-go today. Good news that Brito's back, but Michael, we're still not seeing these teams at full strength. And by the way, let me add that Bubba Nichols is not in the lineup for UCLA, we do not know why, but the Olympian, or future Olympian, I should say, not in the lineup for the Bruins. This is not full throttle versus full throttle tonight. Yeah, both teams dealing with what happens over the course of a season. You're not gonna have everybody available all the time. Hannah Delgado's absolutely gonna be missed. Hannah Gailey and Deja Pangolinen, they're gonna be starting in the lineup today. They've only got seven starts this season between the two of them. They're going to be leaned on heavily. But boy, is it a big deal that Oregon gets Alyssa Brito back in the lineup. She has been their best hitter this season. So, of course, that's a big deal to have her right back in the order batting number three. That could be the difference maker for this whole series, it's just that Alyssa Brito is out there. UCLA winners of 13 in a row. They are 19 and 1 over the course of this season. The last time we saw them against Arizona State, that was on March 19th, the four game series, they swept the Devils. They are now 13th in the country. Oregon, meanwhile, 26 and two. They took three of four last weekend against their rivals in Corvallis. The lone game they lost was a conference game. It was game two against the Beavs. They responded to that though, with a win in the second game of the doubleheader and a dominant Brooke Yanez performance in the last game of the series Saturday. They took Sunday off for Easter and it gave them an extra day to prepare for this marquee series here this weekend. A lot of fans here at the gene for the first time this season. Couldn't ask for a better day in Eugene. Not a cloud in sight, a slight breeze, maybe five miles an hour is blowing towards left field. The Ducks wearing their home white tops with green letters on the back. 
and numbers on the back, letters along the front, green pants, high white socks, and the green visors. And the Bruins, the number two team in the country, led by Kelly Inouye Perez, their head coach, wearing those blue tops with yellow numbers along the back and letters along the front with those white pants and high blue socks. Lineups being exchanged at home plate with our home plate umpire, Calvin Walker. National Anthem will be here in a couple minutes, and we will step aside for that anthem, come back after its conclusion to give you lineups, the field, and the first pitch from the G. Number two, number three, when we come back on KWVA Eugene 88.1 FM. Clear skies here in Eugene, Oregon, and what a matchup on hand. 61 degrees, getting ready for first pitch. The anthem has concluded, and a great pitching matchup as we'll likely see throughout this weekend. For Oregon, they're going with their left-handed pitcher, Brooke Yanez, a 1-4-2 earned run average. He is 10-0. and 0. The starter for UCLA is Megan Faramo, Michael. Megan Faramo, the reigning national pitcher of the year. And boy, has she been special this season. A minuscule .70 earned run average. She is 10 and 1. The one loss she suffered, the only loss UCLA has taken this year, came against Oregon in Tempe, Arizona. When Oregon beat UCLA in 2019, Michael, they also beat. Megan Faramo. It seems like UCLA's starter may have a duck dilemma this weekend. Tell me about this starting pitching matchup and what a key might be for Brooke Yanez to get the job done today. Yeah, this is one of the keys all series is just going to be the incredible battles in the circle from both teams. Without a doubt, Jordan, at the risk of sounding like Bill Walton, it doesn't get any better of the, than this in the Conference of Champions. And looking at Brooke Yanez, she has had some struggles in the first inning of games, particularly, obviously, on the year she has a 1.42 ERA, which is terrific. But in the first inning of games, that ERA is 3.0. And if it's the first inning for an entire weekend series, that ERA is actually 3.50. So it is huge for both Brooke Yanez's confidence and UCLA's offense to have a strong first inning. And that's gonna be right off the bat here in the top of the first. It's going to be huge to see who comes out on top. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you hear those numbers of three, five ERA in the first inning. It doesn't sound too high, but at least compared to what Yanez has done the rest of the year, it is a little bit high. Remember that one, four, two ERA for Oregon's ace. And by the way, elevated importance in the first inning because the Bruins have scored in the first inning in 14 of their 20 games. 38 runs and a plus 33 differential. It's their highest total in any inning this season. An absolute key to get off to a good start. And it's gonna be a tough start for Brooke Yanez. Let's go through the Bruins order, which is particularly potent at the top. They're leading off with the right fielder, number 23, Aaliyah Jordan, the junior hitting 420 this year. Batting second and playing shortstop, the junior number three, Brianna Perez, another 420 hitter. She's at 426. And then the two-time national player of the year, Rachel Garcia, the only senior in this starting lineup, is hitting third, hitting 464. That leads the Bruins uh, lineup among hitters who have had a uh, qualified number of swings. Batting third for UCLA is Delaney Wiz, 358. Hit six home runs this season. Batting fifth, the niece of Tom Brady, Maya Brady, freshman hitting 421. After her will be Alyssa Garcia, hitting 333. 789, Kinsley Washington, Tessa Malu Olu is eighth, and Kelly Good is the nine hole hitter for UCLA. Michael, this is a Bruins lineup that is obviously really good. We don't know exactly if they're as good as the team that went undefeated in the Women's College World Series back in 2019, but I think they're at the very least close. And well, it's hard to stop this lineup. They've only scored fewer than four runs just two times this season. 
fortunately for Oregon, one of those times, it was Brooke Yanez who shut down this line. She's facing Rachel Garcia this time around, which is certainly a challenge, but Oregon has to feel pretty good in that third base dugout behind their horse, Brooke Yanez, who is turning in an All-American caliber season in her own right. Yeah, absolutely, Jordan. We got here about an hour before this game, just in time for UCLA's batting practice, and it is unnatural just how many home runs we saw everyone on this UCLA squad hitting. We had serious concern for the passing cars out in right field and the softballs that were flying out onto the street and sidewalk. UCLA just has mashers all the way through the lineup. And you talked about comparing this team to 2019. It's pretty easy to make that comparison, Jordan. They got a lot of the same names and they got a lot of the same talented players that are going to be all Pac-12 and all American. Series like this defense is so important. So many Duck fans, of course, have memories to some big time series, particularly postseason series against UCLA where, well, defense cost Oregon and a trip to Oklahoma City. And in order to produce that great defense, Melissa Lombardi has fielded this team to take the field in here, uh, here in a couple minutes. Oregon starting in, Gailey out in left field. Deja Pangolina is headed out towards center. Remember, Hannah Delgado not going today. Haley Cruz is the right fielder for Oregon. A lot of powerful lefties in this UCLA order, so Cruz will be busy. Infield looks like this. Rachel Sid is playing at third after a big end of the weekend against Oregon State where she turned in three hits, including an opposite field home run. Alyssa Brito back in the lineup. That's great news for Oregon. She's their leading home run hitter, their leading RBI getter. Well, at least top two in RBI, second behind Allie Bunker. So she's back there at short. Allie Bunker is playing second for Oregon, and Shea Bowden is getting a start at first base. She's got a great history in her own right against these UCLA Bruins. Tara McGowan behind the plate, which means that the DP today will be Maya Felder. Defense cost Oregon a little bit last weekend against the Beavers. They had two errors over the course of the weekend, and all that not that may not look like a huge number. This is a team historically that defines themselves with their defense in the Melissa Lombardi era. Look for them to get back on track in that regard. You can't beat UCLA without a great defensive effort by the entire team. Yeah, you're absolutely not going to have a fun time against the UCLA Bruins if you're giving them free bases via errors, via some unnecessary walks. You talked to Melissa Lombardi this week during the KWVA Coaches Corner, which I recommend on YouTube, and one thing she said that stood out was that this Oregon team is very businesslike. They know what they need to do to execute. They're not thinking about all the Olympians potentially on that UCLA side. They're just thinking about what they got to do to go out and execute the game plan. Yeah, some of the Olympians in the dugout, some of the Olympians are coaches. Oregon has an Olympian in their dugout too, Megan Lagenfeld, who played for UCLA. We'll get into that as the weekend continues. But we are ready for softball. Five mile an hour breeze out to left field. Sunny day in Eugene, 60 degrees. We are set. Aaliyah Jordan leading off for the Bruins. Inez deals the first pitch in there and called a strike at 64 by her home plate umpire, Calvin Walker. First pitch time at 5.08 p.m. Pacific time. Leah Jordan, what a season she's having. 420, seven doubles, a triple horror, and 19 runs batted in as the 0-1 is dealt away. It is one ball and one strike. Talked a lot about Brooke Yanez. Let's give you her full line. The junior is 10-0 this year, a 1-4-2 ERA. 11 starts, 64 total innings. As the 1-1 comes in and misses outside, and as Giannis falls behind in the count, 2-1. And perhaps the most impressive number she has put up, 96 strikeouts compared to only 14 walks. She had a particularly effective strikeout weekend 
last week. As the 2-1 is inside, it actually caught Aaliyah Jordan. She'll head over to first. Pitch didn't miss by much. Maybe a couple inches off the plate, but Jordan able to take one for her team. Give UCLA their first base runner of the afternoon. And remember, Michael, this first inning so key for Brooke Yanez. It's her worst inning. It's UCLA's best inning this season. Yeah, and that's not a good start to give away a free pass like that. Already in a difficult spot, this is going to be uh, a huge at bat for Yanez to work out of this one with Brianna Perez at the plate. Here comes Brianna Perez, the shortstop, with a runner on first. The corners for Oregon playing in four steps from the bag. The pitch to the lefty, and the pitch is high. One ball, no strikes. Perez, the shortstop, 426 this year. Six homers, 16 runs batted in. It's also added five doubles and a pair of triples as well. Coming home with a 1-0, and that pitch is dealt a tad low. Yanez falls behind, two balls, no strikes. Struggling to find the zone here early. Rachel Garcia waiting on deck for the Bruins. She would love to hit with runners aboard. Corner still in, and the 2-0 pitch. Half a strike in the inner half. 2-1, turns into a hitter's count. Perez coming into this game, having hit safely in 10 of 11. And the 2-1 pitch coming in. The bottom of the zone, heavy movement on 63 to even the count at two. So fun watching Yanez in the circle with just in her rhythm, the way that she kind of robotically, every pitch kind of got the same exact motions. As her sign winds and fires the 2-2. A check swing and the pitch missing just a little bit outside. And the count full. You're going to be able to hear it now with the crowd here at James Sanders Stadium. They got a lot of pent-up energy. A lot of them, they haven't seen a softball game in a year. Perez is fourth in the conference in average. The payoff pitch is swung on and missed upstairs. A swinging strikeout to Perez. She does not do that much. Only your 12th this season, the first of the evening for Yanez. And there will be one on for the righty, Rachel Garcia. Folks, she is going to be a key out for Oregon all weekend. Two-time national player of the year. Red-shirted last year as the first pitch is a little bit away. No, called a strike late by Walker. And it's 0-1. Redshirted last year, and she spent the year training for the Olympics with the national team. Now the 0-1. Yanez peers in and fires. Breaking pitch satisfies the bottom of the zone of Walker. And it's 0-2 to Garcia. She has picked up right where she left off in the collegiate ranks, though she missed some time early this season. He's burst out of the scene, a 464 hitter with four homers, six runs batted in. And she swings and misses at the 0-2, breaking below the zone. Back-to-back -back swinging strikeouts for Brooke Yanez. And there are two gone here in the first. Garcia retired swinging. There's no doubt that a theme of this season for Brooke Yanez has been being put into these challenging, stressful situations and just responding with strikeouts after strikeouts. Two in a row there, going had, for three here. Yeah, she had 34 last weekend. The first pitch, the new hitter, Wiz, is outside, 1-0. Yanez, Yanez falls behind. Wiz, the first baseman for the Bruins, batting from the right side of the plate. 19 hits in 53 tries, good for a 358 average. As Walker, our home plate umpire, steps aside and gives time to the righty whiz. An excellent job by Brooke Yanez. Hit the first batter, Jordan. Battle back in the count to Perez, struck her out on the full count. The 1 0 pitch misses low. It's now 2 0. Got ahead of Garcia and struck her out swinging. But behind 2-0 to Wiz here. Stands in the back of the box. Whirls the bat a couple times. Digs in for the 2-0. Has her sign coming home, the 
Swing and a miss. Pitch located away. So you got to do these UCLA hitters. Can't catch too much of that plate. They'll turn on it and make you pay. Wind intensifying. Morgan Outfield playing a little bit the other way, especially in right where Cruz is near the line. Tangalina in center, slightly right of second. Two on, cut on, foul back to the screen. It's two and two. What a start it would be, Michael, if Yanez could strike out this side here in the first. And if she does, you're absolutely going to hear this Jane Sanders crowd roar, really surrounded by fans in all directions. Uh, it's really, really fun to see. Maybe a roar like we haven't heard since 2019. The 2-2 gets away from McGowan, goes all the way to the backstop. Ryan's ball got away from her off the tip of the glove. McGowan and Jordan all over it, headed the second on the wild pitch by Brooke Yanez. Yanez has a quick chat with the freshman Brito at shortstop, resets herself. Full count, two outs, runner in scoring position. Can Yanez get out of this first inning unscathed? Wiz has cleaned up for UCLA this year. 385 with two outs, the full count. It's grounded off Yanez. It bounces to Bowden and she feels and taps the bag. Had the velocity to head to center field. Could have scored Jordan who was on second. Instead, the break goes Oregon's way and they get out of the frame unscathed. No runs, no hits, no errors, and a runner stranded in scoring position. Two Ks for Yanez to start the game, and Oregon comes to the play for the first time against UCLA after a one-minute break. On your voice of Oregon softball, KWVA Eugene, 88.1 FM. KWVA. 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 A programming note for those of you looking for your regularly scheduled DJ. They're currently live on KWVA2, our online stream, which is available at kwvaradio.org. Ranger Station, Ranger speaking. Yeah, hi. I'd like to report a bear sighting. Location? Uh, in the woods, just outside of town. Oh, not surprising. You've got your home. Bears have theirs. Yeah, but see, this wasn't just any bear. This bear was wearing jeans and a hat, as in a smoky bear. Jeans and a hat. That's definitely smoky. What exactly did he have to say? Well, we, we were about to head home, you know, after having a bonfire. Oh, I can guess where this is going. Right, right. See, Smokey told me the fire wasn't actually out. He said if it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. That's true. Did you know that 9 out of 10 wildfires are caused by humans? That means 9 out of 10 wildfires can be prevented. Wow, no kidding? I'm a forest ranger. We never kid. Sorry. <laughs> that was a joke. Oh. If you see someone in danger of starting a wildfire, step in and make a difference because 9 out of 10 wildfires are caused by humans. Brought to you by Smokey Bear, the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Only you can prevent wildfires. Hi, this is Zach Bigley, former assistant sports director, and now it's back to Oregon softball here on KWVA Eugene, 88.1 FM. Last of the first from Jane Sanders Stadium. Oregon out of the top half. That's a huge key to success in this series unscathed. Leah Jordan advanced to second after a wild pitch and a hit by pitch. But Laney Wiz grounded out to end the frame. And here comes the righty, Haley Cruz against Megan Faremo. Shows bump, pulls back. 68 in there, called a strike. Megan Faremo, the reigning pitcher of the year in the country. Last year she went 13 and 1, 0.85 ERA, had 149 Ks and only 90 and a third. She has not slowed down this year. 0-1, Cruz swings at it, mile high, but on the infield. Call is made at first by Wish, he dropped it. You do not see that often, folks. The first baseman for the Bruins, Wiz, had it called. She was under it, and she just bluffed it. Whiffed it, I should say. An error, and Cruz is on first base early. Jordan, what a turn of events. I mean, going back to the last inning, a scorching ball that could have been a base hit bounces right off of Yanez for an out. And then you have that play. Now Haley Cruz is aboard. Tara McGowan now hitting second for Oregon. She's catching today as well. 
Crews on first. Here's the pitch from Faremo. The pitch is high and away, 1-0. Garcia, the catcher, gonna hop out of her crouch, go have a quick chat with the righty Faremo. Just to finish talking about Faremo's numbers this year, she's 10-1, the RA 670 60.1, 60 and a third, I should say, innings of work. 90 Ks, only seven walks. Behind 1-0 and to the righty McGowan. Paramo crouches down and fires home. Pitch missing in, two balls, no strikes. Haley Cruz over there on first, certainly a threat to go. 13 steals this season. She's been caught two times. Long pause for Foremo. Quick check of the band. Fires home the 2-0. McGowan swings through it. Pitch right about mask high. Count 2-1. Bruins playing in at the corners. Foremo uh, definitely going to the upper half of the zone early in this one. The pitch that Haley Cruz almost popped out was also up around the shoulders. Hitters count to McGowan. 2-1. Back comes in. McGowan goes upstairs, climbs the ladder to get it, and deposits the softball right near Hayward Field. Way out of play to even the count at two. There it goes again, Jordan. I mean, that pitch again up by the shoulders. McGowan sort of at the last minute swinging at that one, fouling it away. Count even at 2 2. Faremo stares in. And here's the pitch. McGowan grounds over to the left side, fielded by Malualu. Throws to second for one. First, not in time. They get the lead runner, Cruz. Five to four on the fielder's choice, and McGowan stands on first now. Could have been two. McGowan runs well for her position. Good play over there at third by Malu Aulu. Pick that one out of the dirt. Make a good play to second. Brings up Alyssa Brito, the shortstop who missed last weekend for Oregon. Brito digs in. And the first pitch to the righty shortstop. Swinging through 54. That falls off a table and into the dirt. Blocked by Garcia, which keeps McGowan on first. And it's 0-1. Brito's hitting 418 for Oregon. Nine home runs, 28 runs batted in. 0-1 against Faremo. And here it is. Bunt shown. She does go after it. Can't get it though. It's 0-2. Ahead of Brito. To tell the focus level of Faremo. Is at 100% right now. She's not messing with Brito. She gave up a home run to Brito earlier this season in Tempe, Arizona. And now the 0-2 to the freshman. Faremo comes to the plate. A rise ball, one that McGowan chased, but Brito lays off of. Misses high, and it's one and two. Looking at the extraordinary talents of Brito and Faremo, this is just a freshman and a sophomore, too. So this is going to be a rivalry for years. 1-2, Faremo to Brito. Here it is. Swing and a miss through it right by her at 66. And it was right over the heart of the plate. That is exactly what a challenge pitch looks like. And the K gives UCLA their second out of the inning. Final hope for Oregon is the DP today, Maya Felder. Make the argument she had the biggest weekend for an Oregon hitter last week against the Bruin, or against the Beavers. Went two for 10 in that series, but two RBI hits that were critical. The pitch is on the outer half at 68. Ramo is in the zone, it's 0-1. Haley Cruz still at first base, doesn't seem interested in stealing, but she is 13 for 15 on stolen base attempts this year. Well, it, it was, it's actually McGowan at first now. Oh, right, first choice. UCLA traded those runners on the fielder's choice as the 0-1 to Felder is ripped to third, but right at Malu Ulu. She catches, and that'll do it here 
for Oregon in the first. Haley Cruz got on after an error on a dropped pop-up in the infield by Wiz. A fielder's choice, a K, a line out for the Bruins and they get out of the frame. No runs, no hits, an error. One left, scoreless through one at the Jane between UCLA and Oregon. More when we come back on KWVA. 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 Here at KWVA, one channel isn't always enough. That's why we have KWVA2. KWVA2 is an online-only stream designed to provide you with even more exciting content, including more live sports. To access the stream and view a schedule, visit our website at kwva.uoregon.edu. In the streets below, traffic had stopped. Pedestrians were lying on sidewalks and curled up in doorways. There was no sign of violence, no wrecks, nothing like that. It was as if the people in New York had simply decided to stop whatever they were doing and pass out. Ice coated my stomach. The invasion has started. To find out what happens next, read Percy Jackson and the Olympians by Rick Reardon. Explore new worlds and check out more cool books at your local library. And visit read.gov. Brought to you by the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Jerry Allen, and you're listening to the Oregon Ducks on KWVA 88.1. Entering the second inning from the Jeans, still scoreless between number three, Oregon, and number two, UCLA. Brooke Yanez back in the circle for the Ducks at the first batter she saw and proceeded to strike out Brianna Perez, strike out Rachel Garcia, and get Delaney Wiz to ground out to end the frame. Has to deal with the sensational center fielder, the lefty, Maya Brady. She'll lead off for the Bruins in the top of the second. And the first pitch, left-on-left -left matchup. Missing high and away, 1-0. Brady is hitting 421 this year. It's five home runs and 19 runs batted in. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Checks her swing. The pitch is high and inside. Two balls, no strikes. We or, talked about Yanez's struggles in the first inning. When she gets out of that first inning, that ERA really drops. So this is a comfortable spot for her. But then again, it's never an easy plate appearance against any of these Bruins. Two balls, no strikes. The pitch, this is again Yanez falling behind Curio, wanting nothing to do with Brady. Morgan is running into maybe UCLA's hottest hitter in Brady. She homered in the last three games in the Arizona State Series earlier in March. That's the last time the Bruins played. And the 3-0 pitch. That is in there. Called a strike in her half, 3-1. Well, the Ducks did a good job to keep her at bay. First time they met up in Tempe. Brady only went one for seven against the Ducks over those two games. 3-1 pitch from Yanez. The pitch is in there, called a strike. Fills up the count. Yanez has had the strikeout stuff early, two today. And the full count pitch to Brady is breaking. And it's in there. And it's a called strike three. The third strikeout for Brooke Yanez. And there's one gone here in the top of the second inning. Bob back from a 3-0 start in the AB. Three straight strikes. And now has Alyssa Garcia to deal with the lefty catcher. She swings at the first pitch. Lazy fly ball to right. Cruz plants her feet and comes two steps in. Has it. And there are two away. Jordan, Yanez, no doubt the workhorse for this Oregon rotation. Last weekend against Oregon State, she pitched almost 20 innings and threw over 300 pitches. Pretty much was in the circle for a majority of that series, and she was terrific all series. Yeah, that she was. Kinsley Washington, her next challenge. Pitch almost hits her on the kneecap. Actually 
breaks inside towards the plate, but not enough for the strike call, and it's one and one. Washington, the second baseman for UCLA, hitting 396 in the seven spot for the Bruins. On a pitch, she swings through it, and it's a ball and a strike. Only a couple home runs for Washington. Does have nine doubles this year and 16 runs batted in. Ball and a strike. Yana is in the zone early. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Swing and a towering fly ball inside the infield. The captain, Brito, makes the catch. To set the Bruins down in order. Two scoreless innings for Brooke Yanez. Headed to the middle of the second. One, two, three. Bottom two after a quick break. We're going to send it into our studio with Jonah Rosenberg, who has a sports desk update on KWVA. Welcome into the KWVA Sports Studios. My name is Jonah Rosenberg. Just a quick sports desk update before we get you back to Jane Sanders Stadium for more softball action. We're going into the bottom of the second inning over at Jane Sanders Stadium between the number two ranked UCLA Bruins and the number three ranked Oregon Ducks. Brooke Inez got the start on the mound for the Oregon Ducks and she currently has four strikeouts and two pop flies. Oregon yet to get anything going with the bats. We'll see how well they do against the number two team in the country. Oregon baseball is also in action today, taking on the Oregon State Beavers over at PK Park. They will play tonight at 7 p.m., tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. and Sunday at 4 p.m. Now, it's time to get you back to Jane Sanders Stadium for more softball action between Oregon and UCLA. Ja Jordan Brenner and Michael Streit on the call. Thank you very much, Jonah. Bottom of the second inning about to commence here at the Gene. It'll be Faramo against three righties for the Ducks. Sid Bunker Bowden for Oregon. Ducks got a runner aboard in the first inning against Faremo on a drop pop-up by Delaney Wiz at first. After that, we're set down in order. Rachel Sid moving up in the order. All the way up to five. Third baseman. That's partially because of the big weekend she just had against the Beavers. First couple games of that series went 0 for 5, then turned it on. Went 3 for 7 the last two. And hit a home run in her first at bat on Saturday against Mariah Masson. Swing and a little fly ball inside the infield. Wiz this time has it. One pitch, one away here in the second. Seeing a lot of aggression early in the count from both sides in these last few at bats. And you're not going to see a lot of great pitches to hit against these pitchers. They are filthy. So, hey, if you see one, just give it your best swing, even if it's the first pitch. In comes Allie Bunker, hitting down at six for the Ducks today. And the pitch is in there for a strike. Bunker hitting 400, five homers, 29 runs batted in, leads the team. Also has five doubles and a couple triples. Behind 0-1 to Faremo. Pairing in for her sign from Garcia. And the pitch. And swing deposited foul over there on the concourse. To the left side. Bunker behind 0-2 in protect mode. Player that does not strike out too often. Only two this season. Ramo has a K. Tired Brito swinging in the first and looking for her second. Out of the line, the pitch. Bunker stays alive, lunges for that one, and skies it out of play behind home. Still 2 I'm talking about how tough it is to strike Dally Bunker out. I mean, you're seeing it right there. She just fouled one off down the left field line, fouled another one off to the right side of the diamonds. That's a good protect swing. Nothing in two to Bunker. Digs in and here's the 0-2. She swings and grounds it foul. Down the left side. It's off the netting that protects Oregon's dugout and goes all the way into the left field corner.
Bunker, the junior from Huntington Beach, California, had four hits last weekend, including a couple doubles. Hit safely in 13 of 14 for Oregon. 0-2 from Faremo. Off speed, she just barely gets a piece of it. Garcia couldn't hang on, and Bunker will see another. You could tell, though, that movement from Faremo was just so significant. These UCLA pitchers are just different. Faremo and Garcia, top two ERAs in the Pac-12. Here's the 0-2 again. This time, Bunker climbs the ladder on the rise ball. Got a big piece of it, but well foul, about 50 feet outside the pole in left field. And we'll do a 0-2 pitch again. Jordan, this Faremo rise ball is playing a big factor in this one. Bunker becomes the third hitter, at least that I've seen, that has offered out of the zone at the high pitch. Granted, they've all made contact with it, but it's really tough to judge that that one's going to be a ball until it's too late. Nothing in two. Bunker has fouled off a few. Stay in this count. Here's another 0-2. Laying off 67. About a couple inches outside. It's the count one, two. What an at-bat by Bunker. Making for ammo work here early. That's all you can ask. UCLA defense playing deep everywhere. Especially on the infield. One, two coming home. Again, Faremo misses outside on 67. Giving the count at two. Malau Ulu at third is about six steps behind the third base bag. Shaded towards the line as well. Perez is two steps shy of the lawn in left field. Bunker steps out of the box, takes a couple more hacks. Kinsley Washington is on the grass at second. And Delaney Wiz is actually even with the bag at first. And now retreats behind the bag for the 2-2 pitch. Bunker line to an into left field for a base hit. Spectacular at bat for Bunker and Oregon has their first hit today. Clean single and dumped in front of Gooden. Jordan, many other you know, players may have struck out in that at bat long ago, but it's such an underappreciated part of someone's game to say, you're not going to strike me out. I'm going to put the ball in play. Somebody has to make a throw or a catch out there, and it, that's why Bunker's on first. And here comes Shea Bowden to hit for Oregon. Digging in the back of the box, the first pitch from Ferremo. Right down the middle and called a strike. Maybe wondering why Bowden began the start today. She's only started 10 games this year. The big reason why she's in here is because of the matchup with Faremo. Bowden took her deep to left center earlier this year. The 0-1 misses inside, 1-1. One -on -one. That was one of the more impressive home runs a Duck has hit this season. It was the only one about it's had this season. There was 15 mile an hour wind coming in from left field. It was almost like she had a low stinging three iron through the wind. Gave Oregon a huge insurance run against UCLA in that one. She did start three of four games last weekend against the Beavers. One one comes into Bowden. That is just a little bit low. Works the count to two and one. Only hit in that series. She had an infield single in the Saturday game that she played in. Also had a sacrifice fly in that series. Started all those games at first, where she is today as well. 2-1. Bunkers on first. Scoreless in the last of the second at the G. The pitch at a sky high off the bat of Bowden. Up and out of play. Both Wiz and Washington had a look. It is two and two. Shea Bowden at the plate, just one of three seniors in either team's starting lineup. 
it's amazing just how much youth there is on both sides. 17 out of 20 players in the lineup presumably are going to be back next year. Two balls, two strikes. And here's the pitch. Check swing. Didn't go. Out of the glove of Garcia. She dropped it. Scrambles to it. And plenty of time to keep Bunker at first. Did that actually catch the bat of Bowden at the plate, Michael? No, it did not. Board just late. Check swing, but didn't catch the bat, and it is a ball, which puts the count full. Here's the 3-2. Bowden swings through it. Had eyes for Hayward Field in left center. Big swing and a miss. Second K for Ferremo. And two gone in the second for Deja Pangolina. For Ferremo, that is her 92nd K of the season. Final hope is Pangolina. Morgan hoping for some two out magic. The pitch is called a strike. Nothing in one. Pangolinen has really struggled this year. One hit in 12 ABs. Been a frequent pinch runner, has scored four runs. He's driven in a couple and walked a pair of times too. Nothing in one. The pitch, she checks her swing. The pitch is away, one on one. Bunker does have speed at first, but doesn't often use it to steal bases. It's only tried twice, was successful once. Now the one one to Pangolina. Looks in, Ramos' pitch is the breaking pitch low. Two balls, one strike. Pangolina and Hannah Gailey in the on-deck circle going to do their best to try and replace the unavailable Hannah Delgado in this one. Two balls and a strike. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. 66. Down low. And it is two and two. Oregon has been so good with two outs this entire season. Looking for more magic here, the 2-2 pitch. Staying alive is Pangolina, fouling it back to the screen. How good has this offense been with two outs? 94 of their 184 runs. That's 51.1% of the time. Oregon has scored with two outs in a frame. 2-2, two, two, two outs, Bunker on first. Scoreless at the Jane, the pitch. is fouled off, behind home and out of play, and Pangolinen giving Faremo a fight, just like Bunker did before she singled to left with two strikes. Jordan, you talked to Melissa Lombardi about the keys to winning games in this series. It's timely hitting, and that means getting those runs in with two outs. 2-2, two, two, once more. Ramos shuffles the ball in the right hand, coming onto the plate. Hit just high and away, and it fills up the count at 3-2. Ramo exhausting a whole lot of energy. She is used to just rolling through teams, rolling through hitters. She's been particularly effective since the loss she took against Oregon earlier this season. Oregon fighting for their lives. The 3-2 is a breaking pitch grounded to the left side, scooped up by Mana Ulu. She throws the first, gets Pangolina to retire the side. So Oregon can't do anything with Bunker's hit, no errors, and they strand a runner on base. They're two full, still scoreless at the Jane here on KWVA Eugene 88.1 FM. KWVA. KWVA Sports isn't just on the radio. Be sure to check out the website, kwvaradio.org, for show outlines, archive segments, and exclusive web only content. You can find it all on kwvaradio.org. 
Would it be crazy if you just stopped everything, packed your bags and left for a week, a month, a year? What if you left for two years? Would people think you'd lost your mind? What if you were going far away to help in a village on the edge of the Gobi Desert? A village crowded with Buddhist temples, not skyscrapers. A place where there isn't a word for recluse, but a thousand words for community. Would it be crazy to go 5,000 miles from home? To spend time with people the rest of the world only reads about? To build libraries and fill them with stories? Prepare a meal with food you helped grow? To teach children and learn a thing or two about yourself? Would that be crazy? Peace Corps. Life is calling. How far will you go? To find out more, call 1-800-424-8580 or visit PeaceCorps.gov. You're tuned in to the home of Oregon softball, KWVA. Let's get you back down to Jane Sanders Stadium on 88.1 FM. Top three here at the Jane, 0-0 between number two and number three in the land. Here's Michael Strike to tell you more on play-by-play. Thanks, Jordan. Brooke Yanez back to work in the circle. There's no doubt that both from the pitching side and the hitting side, Oregon not afraid of this UCLA team. They handed UCLA their only loss of the season so far. You know what I think it's been, Michael? It's been gritty, right? Every single at-bat, you look at what Bunker did, fighting back in that count, hitting a single to left field in that pangolin and ground out to end the second. Now they're really making for Amo fight. Gritty at bats, not taking anything for granted. And I think that's a product of coming out of that Oregon State series, battling for four games against your rival on the road. Tessa Malaulu steps in, batting left-handed. First pitch, right down the middle for strike one. Malaulu, this is just her sixth start of the season. She's presumably in place of Bubba Nichols, who is not in the lineup today. The 0-1 pitch from Yanez. She fires. This one's low for ball one. Yanez has been fiddling a little bit. She not walked anybody, but she's been falling behind in counts. I think that's just, you know, you can't throw all strikes at this lineup. They'll make you pay. And the 1-1. Swung on, fouled straight back. For strike number two. Malaulu playing third base for the Bruins. She's only made five starts in the season before this, but she's also made seven other appearances. And well, at the moment, her on base percentage is 750. So, a pretty good weapon off the bench for the Bruins. The 1 2 pitch swung on, grounded to Bunker. Bunker will field it and make the first out of the inning. Here comes the sophomore, Kelly Gooden, stepping into the box with one out. You can see the corners for Oregon are in. Gooden, a threat to bunt safely. And the first pitch, bunted on, fielded, fired over for the out. Very cleanly executed by Shea Bowden at first. A quick throw to Bunker. Beautiful execution by the Ducks. Yeah, and, you know, you wonder, and this isn't to slander Maya Felder. I think she's a fine defender. I think Shea Bowden is a little bit more athletic over there at first, coming in from first, fielding, throwing over to first where Bunker was covering. Just an excellent play by Oregon's first baseman today, and it's another reason she's in the lineup, in addition to having success against Faremo. First pitch to the leadoff hitter, Aaliyah Jordan, will be a ball. Rukinez got out of that first inning with a lucky bounce on a hard hit line drive off of her shin. And since then, she's been cruising. Hasn't allowed a hit yet to the Bruins. Here's Jordan, her second time up. Swung on, fouled into the stands for strike number one. Jordan was hit by a pitch in her first at bat. Jordan stepping back in, wearing number 23. 
And the pitch from Yanez, 1-1, high for ball two. We talk about what a powerhouse the state of California is in terms of producing talent. The entire UCLA roster only has three players that aren't from the state of California. And here's Aaliyah Jordan for the 2-1. That one's going to be outside to make it 3-1. Jordan from Chula Vista, California. It really is impressive that if you restricted UCLA for some reason to only recruiting players from the state of California, they'd still be able to keep most of their roster and have a pretty great team. The 3-1 swung on and missed strike two. And Brooke Yanez is going to find herself in another full count. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it, Michael? I mean, UCLA is the most historic softball program in the United States. And California produces the best softball talent. So I think that's, that's how you get the answer to that equation. Full count, slow on and miss, strike three. Brooke Yanez continues to cruise. And that's going to be a quick one, two, three for the UCLA Bruins. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. The score still 0-0. And the Ducks get back to work in the bottom of the third on the other side of this break. You're listening to KWVA Eugene, 88.1 FM. KWVA. 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 Want the latest sports talk? These are the type of games you'd expect from Oregon at the beginning of the season. Not high scoring. Uh, they're going to score a couple runs to keep you in it and maybe win the game, but it's going to be pitcher dominated. You want the best sports debates? They may not be undefeated like the Ducks, but if you're going to be close, that's about as close as you can get. Then tune into Quacksmack every weeknight from 6 to 7 p.m. He absolutely needs to be that one player that stands out on this team that when he takes the hill and he gets up there to pitch for the Ducks, the Ducks win. Today's top stories, exciting discussions, and interviews with a variety of local guests. It's all on Quacksmack. <laughs> And the only place to find it is right here on KWVA Eugene 88.1 FM. Hi, this is Zach Bigley, former assistant sports director, and now it's back to Oregon softball here on KWVA Eugene 88.1 FM. Welcome back to Jane Sanders Stadium, the bottom of the third between the number two UCLA Bruins and the number three Oregon Ducks. In the first of a four game set, the score is still 0 0. Megan Faremo will get back to work, and Hannah Daly will step in for her first at bat of the day. Yeah, we're really cruising along here, and I guess that makes sense. I mean, Michael, this is a matchup between two of, I'd say, probably the 10 best pitchers in college softball today. I think Faremo. You definitely shoo her in for one of those spots as the reigning pitcher of the year. I think Brooke Yanez has emerged and deserves that recognition, especially if you look at how dominant she's been here today, has not given up a hit to the number two team in the country, but also it predates today, right? She beat UCLA earlier this season. She dominated a really good Beavers lineup last week, and she's doing it in, I'd argue, the premier conference in the country. This is an elite pitching matchup, and as a result, we have not been here for too long. Yeah, Jordan, the suspense is building here, and you talked about both teams grinding out at bats, running hard down the line, both defenses making really nice plays. It's just, you know, a real title fight, and you're just waiting for one of these two teams to uh, deliver a knockout punch. Yeah, I think this is uh, how a lot of people expected this series to go. Look at the history of these two teams. And when they get together, I mean, there have been some classic pitching duels, right? Garcia, Kleist is one that comes to mind. Though that one didn't factor Oregon's way. I, really, the entire history of these two programs, even going back to the Langen Field days or the Sheridan Hawkins days, Hawkins days, the Lisa Fernandez days. There have been some elite pitchers between these two teams, and we're seeing a couple more today. That's right, Hannah Gailey, the left fielder for Oregon. First pitch is going to be just a bit inside for ball one.
This is an interesting start for Hannah Gailey. I think just Melissa Lombardi had a feeling. Let's see if it pays off. Yeah, 1-0. One 1-0 oh. one oh pitch. That one is going to be strike one from home plate umpire Calvin Walker. Count is 1-1. One, one. Yeah, Hannah Gailey, just her third start of this season. Definitely a, a show-me start from Melissa Lombardi. See if she can bring something to the plate. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Check swing. And that's going to be a strike called. Eric Hawthorne over at first base says that she went around. Yeah, that's not just the fans. Megan Lingenfield turning over to Eric Hawthorne, still letting him know that that was a bad call, shaking her head at first. No question about her loyalty to Oregon, despite a fantastic career in her collegiate days with the Bruins. Yep, so that'll make the count one and two for Faremo. She fires. Another check swing. And it's going to be strike three on Hannah Gailey, and she's sent down. Yeah, Faremo just pulling out the straight nasty stuff on Gailey and that AB. You know, head coaches, they like to push some buttons. You never know why Lombardi decided to go with Gailey today. Maybe she had a great week of practice. Who knows, at least that time, her first AB, it looked like she was overmatched by Faremo. Here's Haley Cruz as we get back to the top of the order. One out, first pitch right on the outside for a strike one. Haley Cruz 0 for 1 on the day. Yeah, Faremo is out of that mess around territory. You know, she was fiddling around the zone the first couple frames. She is locked in right now, and Oregon's getting her best at the moment. This is Faremo's best, the 0 1 inside for ball one. And we're only two and a half innings into this one, but you talked about just how many historically great pitchers both these teams have produced and no doubt that we are potentially in the middle of another classic performance from both sides in the circle. The 1-1 from Faremo who still has a .67 ERA on the season. Right on the outside again, this one's gonna be ball two, but Faremo really placing the ball well on the inside and outside portions of the plate. I mean, it just looks different out of her hand than it has against any other pitcher in this stadium this season. And I've seen, you know, I see it in person. It, it just, it's 68, which isn't necessarily, necessarily the hardest Oregon scene, but it moves so much and it's so crisp. The 2-1 to Cruz, swung on, dribbled over to second, and that will be out number two. That was Kinsley Washington making the throw from second base on the softly hit ground ball. Yeah, just a drop ball there from Faremo, started over center of the plate broke down and away from Cruz. He had to lunge after it. You don't see Cruz taking swings like that all too often. No problem for Washington and two quick outs here in the third. Catcher Tara McGowan, also 0 for 1 on the day, steps up with two outs. Nobody on base. The score is still 0-0 here in the bottom of the third. First pitch, strike one called. And Megan Fremo really had to grind last inning, but there's no doubt that she just came out and this one feels a lot more comfortable and feels like she's hitting, hitting her groove, especially after getting out of some tough at bats last inning. The L1 pitch to McGowan, soft stuff. It's gonna be popped up and it's gonna get tracked and caught in foul territory by Delany Wiz. That's gonna be out number three and that's gonna be three innings in the books. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. We're going to send it to another break, and on the other side will be the top of the fourth in this scoreless one. You're listening to KWVA Eugene, 88.1 FM. KWVA. 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 A programming note for those of you looking for your regularly scheduled DJ. They're currently live on KWVA 2, our online stream, which is available at kwvaradio.org. Here at KWVA, one channel isn't always enough. That's why we have KWVA2. KWVA2 is an online-only stream designed to provide you with even more exciting content, including more live sports. To access the stream and view a schedule, visit our website at kwva.uoregon.edu. 
Students, when I call the reason for your absences throughout the years, please exit the auditorium without your high school diploma. <clears throat> Too tired. Family trip. Sick day. Starting the holidays early. Starting in the sixth grade, students who miss 18 days or more of school in a year for any reason will fall behind and risk not graduating high school. How many days of school has your child missed this year? Absences add up. Keep track at boostattendance.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Army and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Jerry Allen, and you're listening to the Oregon Ducks on KWVA 88.1. Welcome back. It's the top of the fourth inning. Brooke Yanez still out there, and Brianna, Brianna, I should say, Perez stepping in. She's also 0 for 1 on the day, which is the case for many of these Bruins and Ducks their first time through the order. The first pitch, high for ball one. Brianna Perez, a junior playing shortstop. This will be her 21st start of the season. She's basically been in the lineup for the whole year for the Brewers. Been there as a consistent force. The second pitch is high for ball two. So Brooke Yanez going to start off behind in this count, 2-0. And the 2-0 pitch. Another high pitch, 3-0. And as expected, you're going to see Catcher Terry McGowan just run out there to have a quick chat. Yeah, dangerous spot here, Rachel Garcia, a righty, one of the few righties in this UCLA order. Of course, we don't have to tell you how good she is again. She's waiting on deck. You don't want to face her with a runner on. And port that Yanez gets back in the zone here and tries to battle back and get another count. She did the same thing with Perez in the first inning. Fell behind 3-0, then battled back and struck her out swinging. 3-0 pitch, and another high pitch to Perez for ball four, and that's a four-pitch walk. Yeah, couldn't bring that pitch back, and looks like she didn't want anything to do with Perez. Here comes Rachel Garcia, folks. Big spot in this game. Scoreless through three. Here comes the two-time national player of the year. And here she comes. UCLA obviously has the energy in their dugout. They want this to be the first runs of this inning. Swung on, first pitch fouled away for strike one. You know, in Major League Baseball, Shohei Otani is getting a lot of hype for, you know, dominance as a pitcher and a hitter. But Jordan, Rachel Garcia's been doing it before it was cool. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's done it. Oregon Samba so last week, she's great at it. Lisa Fernandez, the pitching coach for UCLA, one of the best all time to do it. Second pitch high again, ball one. That was 54 from Yanez as she's trying to mix it up. Keep Garcia off balance. You definitely don't want to make a mistake here. Like you said the suspense building for both sides and you never know when you could have that knockout punch from either side. The one one, swung on and missed by Garcia. Just a fearless pitch from Yanez. Started Garcia down in the zone. It's a pitch that started right over the heart of the plate. It definitely broke up above the zone. Garcia swung through. The bleachers here are rocking at Jane Sanders. The one, two. Grounded up the middle. Fielded by Burrito. Good throw to first, and that's out number one. Just a fantastic play by Alyssa Brito, Oregon's freshman shortstop. Short of a wedge web gem, but still a high degree of difficulty. That was a high chopping ground ball. She had to field it off of a short hop. She picked it out of the dirt, sidearm throw to first to get Garcia, but UCLA does move the runner. They have a runner in scoring position with just one out in the inning. That's right, runner in scoring position as Perez advanced to second base. Here's Delaney Wiz. First pitch swung on. She tried to check it, but she definitely went around, and that's going to be strike one. And that play from Brito at shortstop, like you said, not exactly a web gem, but one of those plays where it was so difficult, but Brito made it look not that difficult. She made it look relatively easy. Really well played by her. And here's Delaney Wiz back in for the 0 1. Here it comes. Swung on and fouled near the net, and that's an 0-2. Yeah, 
And we're seeing the version of Yanez right now where she's really comfortable with that rise ball. Can be a dangerous pitch to throw at times. It can get away from you, go past McGowan, or even worse, stay over the plate. But right now, that's a pitch that Yanez trusts and has gone to quite a bit, especially in this A-B. Here's the 0-2, another foul ball. Beautiful day here at Gene Sanders Stadium as the clock goes past 6 p.m. here on the West Coast. The shadow starting to creep in, and you can see, Jordan, there's kind of a shadow starting to cross home plate. Not really far enough to affect the batter yet, but that could be a factor later in this game, which, you know, as if the pitchers didn't need any more advantages, that would certainly be another help for them. That's a good call. There are a couple light posts that are right in front of the plate. And the 0-2 again. Called strike three. <laughs> Huge out number two for Brooke Yanez. And we got to see home plate umpire Calvin Walker's strike call, which, you know, those strike three calls, I'm sure they feel a lot better when there's a crowd behind you as well. Now the center fielder, Maya Brady, also 0 for 1 today. And the chance to drive in a run with two outs here. First pitch is going to be a ball. Back to that out pitch against Wiz. That was a drop ball. So Yanez went up, up, up three times in a row with a rise ball, then started one up with the drop. It broke right down the middle and left Wiz in her track. She, she didn't even swing at it. Nasty pitch from Yanez. One out pitch to Brady. Going to be 62 miles per hour, but another ball. And Yanez, she really only tops out at 64, 65, but it's the placement that is just remarkable. Uh, the way that she's able to, like you said, hit exactly the spots that she wants to with the rise balls, with the drop balls. That's why she's uh, struck out so many batters this year. Here's the 2-0 to Brady. This one swung on, and it's going to be fouled into the UCLA side. Once again, there's a runner on second base, threatening to score. This ball finds its way to the outfield. 2-1 count on Maya Brady with two outs in a 0-0 ball game in the top of the fourth inning. And the 2-1 to Brady. That's gonna be ball three. Alyssa Garcia in the on-deck circle for the Bruins. Yanez checks her wrist for the sign, and she's going to fire here, 3-1. Swung on and missed, strike two. And Jordan, it's going to be another full count here. Full count, two outs. This is a high-stress situation for both sides. Maya Brady, back in, full count, here it comes. Swung on and missed. Another strikeout for Yanez. And this game is still tied. No runs, no hits, no errors. One runner left on base for the Bruins, but it's 0-0, and we're going to send it to a break. On the other side of this break, the Ducks get back to work in the bottom of the fourth. You're listening to KWVA Eugene, 88.1 FM. KWVA. 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 Attention University of Oregon students. Are you interested in sports? Maybe a career in journalism? If so, consider being a volunteer here at KWVA Sports where we broadcast Oregon Ducks football, volleyball, soccer, and softball, live on 88.1 FM. Hand off to Verdell up the middle on a huge hole inside the 20, 10, 5, touchdown. See you later, Utah. Oregon, book it. They will be Pac-12 champions. Ellis rears back. Her 0-1, chop left, that slow roller. Lily picks it up, throws to first. It's in time. Oregon books their ticket to Oklahoma City. The Ducks making a return trip to the Women's College World Series. KWVA is the only place on campus where student volunteers can gain broadcast, production, and coverage experience. To apply, 
Visit our studio next to Falling Sky Pizzeria or email sports at kwvaradio.org. That's sports at kwvaradio.org. You're tuned in to the home of Oregon softball, KWVA. Let's get you back down to Jane Sanders Stadium on 88.1 FM. Welcome back. It's the bottom of the fourth inning and in what's been a real title fight between number two UCLA and number three Oregon. Still 0-0, just one hit combined between both teams. And Alyssa Brito will step in to try and get something done, to try and squeeze anything out here against Megan Faremo, who is building and building with confidence as this game goes on. Yeah, her ERA is all the way down to .66 this year. Special season from the right. And here's the first pitch to the three hitter Brito. It's gonna be ball one. Brito 0 for 1 today. He's got 28 RBIs on the season. Also leads the team with a 9-10 slugging percentage. Here's the 1-0. That one's going to slide in there at 54 for strike one. And those pitches from Faremo, I mean, they're so hard to hit that those, that soft stuff can really throw you off balance. 1-1 one, one pitch to Brito. Goes back to the heater. 65, swung on and missed, strike two. Yeah, mixing up her pitch as well, like you just alluded to. Struck out Brito with an off-speed pitch. No, rather, set her up with an off-speed pitch the first time that went back to the heat to strike her out. Throw a buyer in the first. You see what Faremo wants for the strikeout pitch. She actually shakes off her catcher here. She's going to want to talk to the catcher, uh, Garcia, get those signs figured out, make sure they know what they want to throw here. I mean, just so much respect to Alyssa Brito. Especially Megan Faremo, of course, we mentioned Brito has the home run off of her, but you know, this is the first time they're facing off in conference play. Faremo already knows about Brito. Not messing around here. One, two. Outside. A little bit low, a little bit outside. Ball two. It's going to be a two, two count. Yeah. And it's just both these players obviously know about each other. They're freshmen and sophomore, respectively. This might be a long rivalry between these two. 2-2 two -two pitch. Here comes Faremo. Swung on, fouled into the right field snatch out over there for, well, it's still a 2-2 two -two count. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. Zero outs. Score is 0-0. Zero to zero. Megan Faremo has three strikeouts so far. And here's the 2-2. Right up the middle. That's going to be a base hit for Brito. Special at bat by Alyssa Brito. Noticed the tendency from Faremo in that AB. Went two straight hard pitches to try to get her out. Missed on one. Brito fouled off the other. So Faremo switches to the drop ball to get Brito out. Brito was right on it. It was hanging over the middle of the plate, and she tattooed that single to center. Here comes the DP, Maya Felder. With now a runner on first in Brito. This one swung on right to the second baseman. Quick throw to second. And that's going to be an out at second. You saw the second baseman, Washington, juggle it a little bit. So it wasn't going to be a double play ball. She was lucky to still get the force out at second. Yeah, we entered this game talking about Oregon's defense, right, Michael? Oregon committed two errors last weekend against Oregon State. So far today, it's been UCLA's defense that has cost them. That should have been too, right? Maya Felder does not run all too well at the plate. It was right at Kinsley Washington over there at second. In and out of her glove. Throw over to Perez, just barely in time to get Brito. They could have gotten two on one out. Instead, Oregon gets an extra out. 
And they bring up maybe their hottest hitter, Rachel Sid. That's right, Rachel Sid will step in. The Oregon third baseman, she's gonna have a runner on first with one out to tell Maya Felder. It's on first after the first pitch, fielder's choice. Here's Rachel Sid. She has 19 career homers in an Oregon uniform. That's the most of anyone on the active roster. So she's looking for number 20 in her collegiate career. Here's the first pitch to Sid. 54 miles per hour in there for strike one. And Michael, I'll add, because Felder does not run well, Oregon playing chess. They're going to bring in Carlson to run for her, and she's in pinch running at first. You go. You're going to see a lot of these tactical decisions from both coaches trying to get those little advantages that could decide the game. Second pitch also going to be a strike called. So two strikes looking there for Rachel Sid. As you mentioned now, Ariel Carlson at first base. One out. The 0-2 count. And here comes for Amo. Check swing, and it's not going to be called a strikeout by first base umpire Eric Hawthorne. So Sid just barely lays off in what would have been Faremo's fourth strikeout of the day. Instead, we have a one-two count. And see if Faremo goes back to the rise pitch. Here's the one-two. Right down the middle, popped up. Washington tracks, makes the grab at second. She had to sort of chase that one like an outfielder, but she made the grab on the run, and that's out number two. Well, Aaliyah Jordan, the right fielder, does not run well. And even though that was, you know, headed towards medium right field, she was nowhere near that ball. So Kinsley Washington, that was totally her play. It was obvious that she made the call. Good jump on that ball to get, get under it. Make a catch for a big second out. Here's Allie Bunker, one of the most impressive at-bats of the day and one of just two hits that either side has had today in her first time up. She battled against Faremo and ended up with a base hit. First pitch, here comes an attempted steal, and that's going to be safe, and that is a remarkable stolen base for Ariel Carlson. And, well, the Ducks, they scored, like you said, 50% of their runs with two outs. Here comes a runner in scoring position for Bunker. Yeah, that's not on Alyssa Garcia, the catcher. Her, threw, her throw beat Carlson by at least two steps. That's on the tag applied by UCLA and Perez at shortstop. She's usually really good at it, but just flat out missed Carlson. But again, the throw beat Carlson. She looked like she was gonna be out by a mile. Somehow evades that tag and the Ducks have a runner in scoring position. Molly Bunker's gonna be looking for an RBI. A one pitch from Faremo. Check swing again, called strike. It's going to be 0-2. Allie Bunker leads the team in RBIs with 29 heading into today. And Well, this inning could have been over if Kinsley Washington had turned the double play earlier. We talked about the tag on that stolen base attempt. Those little mistakes, they don't get marked down as errors exactly, but those little mistakes could add up. Here's the 0-2. This one fouled into left field on a high pitch that Bunker just got a piece of. You're going to see Bunker battle again. I mean, it's remarkable how difficult it is to strike her out. She's going to do whatever it takes to get that ball in play and make somebody in the field have to make a play in order to retire her. But she is in an 0-2 hole. She's been here before, and she's gotten her way out of it. Here's Faremo, the 0-2. This one low for ball one. Melissa Brito had a single to get to first base. She was later out at second base on a force out, but the pinch runner at first, Carlson, swiped a bag to get herself to second base. With two outs, the one-two pitch from Ferremo to Bunker. Swung on into left field, and listen to that crowd, it's gone!
Well, the first mistake of the day really for Megan Faramo. A hanging drop ball, Allie Bunker makes her pay, tattoos one to left field, and Oregon is up two to nothing. And boy, oh boy, was the crowd ready for that one. A no doubter into left field. The Ducks leading the number two team in the country. The Ducks are on top 2-0. Faramo's ERA now up to 0.88 after surrendering those two. And here is her first pitch to Shea Bowden. That's going to be ball one. Wow, what a series of at-bats from Allie Bunker. Her first at-bat, she battled and battled to get a base hit. And in an 0-2 count, she just scorches a ball right to left field. A no-doubt home run to give the Ducks a 2-0 lead in the bottom of the fourth. The 1-0 pitch to Bowden. And that's going to be outside again. Ball two. And Megan Faramo, like you said, terrific all year. No doubt one of the best pitchers in the entire country. Well, she's definitely a little bit rattled after that, like you said, her first mistake of the day. And now she's got to just focus on getting Shea Bowden out and getting back to the dugout. Two outs in this inning, 2-0 count. That's going to be on the inside corner for strike one. And if there's been one problem for Faramo this year, it's been that she has given up home runs. Only three doubles, but she has given up five home runs this season. And Allie Bunker now second alone on the team with her sixth blast of the season. A huge blast from Allie Bunker. 2-1 pitch to Shea Bowden. That's going to be fouled back for strike two. We talked about how the suspense with this game, both teams so talented, executing so well that it may just be one swing in the bat or one knockout punch that ends up being the deciding factor. And obviously, we've got a long way to go, but Ali Bunker definitely got quite the blow to UCLA here with that two-run blast. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The pitch to Shea Bowden. This one fouled out to right field. Four. Still going to be a 2-2 count. And this Ducks team, as good as Faramo is, they're just not afraid. They're executing and they're grinding out at bats. And they're just in the batter's box with poise. Every hitter in that lineup feels confident in that order as you uh, have the catcher Garcia out to have a quick chat with Faramo. And UCLA getting Rachel Garcia ready quickly out there in the right field bullpen. 2-2 coming. And the 2-2 pitch to Bowden. Dean Sanders is rocking. Here it comes, another foul ball. Even if Bowden goes down here, still making Faramo work really hard. Faramo has 90 strikeouts in 60 innings this season, but the Ducks are making her work. She only has three strikeouts today. And here's the 2-2 two -two to Bowden. That one is going to be a called strike three, and that's going to be her fourth strikeout of the day as she gets out of that one. But the Ducks put up two runs on one hit. No errors, nobody left on. Oregon in charge, 2-0. And you'll see Brooke Yanez get back to work in the top of the fifth. After this short break, you're listening to KWVA Eugene, 88.1 FM. KWVA. 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 Psst, Steven. Who said that? Me, down here. Ugh, what are you, a yellow booger? I'm a banana slug, Steven. What are you doing in my room? I'm your sense of adventure. It's been a long time since we've had an adventure in the forest. Mom took me to the forest last year. I'm a slug, Steven. It took me a long time to get here. You're right. I should get out. Yeah, the forest is not that far away. Hey, Mom! Come to the forest where the more adventurous you lives. Check out discovertheforest.org for cool places nearby. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. In the streets below, traffic had stopped. Pedestrians were lying on sidewalks and curled up in doorways. There was no sign of violence, no wrecks, nothing like that. It was as if the people in New York had simply decided to stop whatever they were doing and pass out. Ice coated my stomach. The invasion has started. To find out what happens next, read Percy Jackson and the Olympians by Rick Reardon. Explore new worlds and check out more cool books at your local library. And visit read.gov. Brought to you by the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. 
Hi, this is Zach Bigley, former assistant sports director, and now it's back to Oregon softball here on KWVA Eugene 88.1 FM. Back inside, Jane Sanders. The Ducks are up 2-0. Brooke Yanez, she's pretty good pitching with a lead. And here's Jordan Brenner. Thanks, Michael. Alyssa Garcia leading off for the Bruins. Soft speed pitch out in front of it. Taps it foul. Garcia is 0 for 1 today. The left-handed hitting catcher for UCLA. She flew out to right field. Brooke Yanez, spectacular so far against the Bruins. Ahead 0-1, winds and fires. A hesitant swing as she did go through, says Calvin Walker. A rise ball started at the chest, soared above high level, and it's 0-2. Yanez has retired six Bruins with a strikeout. Here's the 0-2 pitch. A little bit away. And Garcia takes it. It's one and two. You can hear the moans of the crowd. One and two. Yanez back on the bump. Twist has her sign and comes in. Swing and a high pop-up right behind home. McGowan near the netting. Now coming back two steps towards the field. Under it to make the catch. One gone in the fifth. Yanez, she's been good all year. Looked like she was scuffling just a little bit the first couple weeks that Oregon came back to the gene this season. Announced herself in a big way as totally ready last weekend. The first pitch to Washington is in there for a strike. Well, check sing from the second baseman for UCLA. Today she's taken it to a new level, Michael. Yeah, and Jordan Yanez has been in exactly this situation. She's pitched with a lead against the UCLA Bruins, against this lineup, and that was UCLA's only loss of the season so far was with Yanez in the circle, dancing her way through a really difficult seventh inning where she was able to seal the victory. Now the 0-1 to Washington. A little bit outside, 1-1. One, one. So over the last two weekends already, if you're including what she's done today, she did last weekend against the Beavers, you can count 40 strikeouts. Right, 34 compared to five walks against the Beavers last weekend, and already six today. And the 1-1 one, one coming to Washington. She checks swings, maybe a little bit more than that. Popped up out of play, headed to the Oregon bullpen. But again, these UCLA hitters, I mean, they're, they're used to taking mighty rips, huge hacks. Not so much today. Yanez has them second guessing themselves in a way. And it's one and two to Washington, who has already enshrined her place in softball history. At the game winning hit in the 2019 championship series. A one, two, breaks low and away. And again, you can hear the hundreds of umpires in the stands call that one strike three. Problem is they are not Calvin Walker. And the counts evened up at two. Bowden deep at first, sit in at third. The 2-2 pitch, chop off the glove of Yanez, heads the bunker, has to hurry. Sidearm throw of first, not quite in time. And these hundreds of umpires are disagreeing with yet another call. This time, Eric Hawthorne is hearing it from the crowd. And that was a close play, Michael. I thought that that 3-4, or rather that 1-4-3 could have been an out. Yeah, it Jordan, was not. that was nearly in time. I mean, that was really remarkable just how quickly Bunker got the ball out of her glove. If she made that play, it would be just another really impressive play from this Oregon defense. But instead, UCLA tying runs at the plate. And the first pitch into the new hitter called a strike. It is Mala Ulu, the third baseman for UCLA. Particularly frustrated, grown from the crowd as Yanez loses her no-hit bid here through three innings of work. 
Yeah, and it's, it's funny how we've had two of those ground balls hit right at Yanez in the first inning. You had one that should have been an RBI base hit that bounced off her shin straight to my, actually Shane Bowden at first for what ended up being an easy out. And there you have a play that literally goes off of her glove. She nearly had it. And then even off of her glove was nearly still an out. Two ground balls up the middle, different outcomes for the Ducks. Here's the 0-1 to Malaulu. Swing, a good one. Bows it back to the screen. And it is 0-2. 500 is her average in her true freshman season. Only two extra base hits, both have been doubles. She hits her first career home run now, she'll tie the game. Two nothing Oregon. And here's the 0-2 pitch. Breaking pitch away, one and two. Oregon took the lead in the last of the fourth inning on Allie Bunker's sixth home run of the season, a two-run shot to left center. And it gives Yanez a lead, the one-two pitch. Drop ball that doesn't drop enough. Over the heart of the plate, but too tall, and it's 2-2. Jordan, as we're well into this game, and you gotta say home field advantage is definitely back in college softball with these fans full of energy. Here's the 2-2 pitch, swing, and a pop-up to shallow center. Brito's gonna make the call. One step into the green grass of center. Catch is made, two gone. And Jordan, home field advantage is noteworthy because in the college softball schedule, Oregon and UCLA, for example, they play every year, but only one of them gets to host every year for Pac-12 play. So. It's a big deal that Oregon gets to be here in Eugene, and it's not in L.A. with some UCLA fans. Um, yeah, absolutely. A huge advantage in a normal year, probably more than this year, but you're right. This, this crowd today, they've done a good job, and I think they've missed being here. They, they have put their foot down and made a mark on this game. There are two away here in the top of the fifth inning. The nine hole hitter, Kelly Gooden, who plays left field, hitting for UCLA. They are trailing by two. Here's the pitch to the lefty. The runner goes, McGowan pump fakes the throw. And Washington has a steal of second. That's her eighth bag in eight, eight tries this year. And the Bruins have yet another runner in scoring position. That is their third of the game. You saw a lot of quickness there from Washington in that steal, just that first step. So now the infield playing more shallow. The 1-0 is swung on and missed. The pitch upstairs, 1-1. One and, one. and the outfield is playing shallow as well in case Gooden who isn't exactly a power hitter. Only one home run this year. In case she hits a base hit, there will be a play at the plate potentially. 1-1 one, one with two gone. The pitch. She bunts one in the air towards third. Sid charges in. A basket catch to retire this side. In the inning, no runs on one hit. The first for the Bruins today, no errors. And the Bruins strand their third runner, and all three have been stranded in scoring position. For through four and a half innings, it's number three, Oregon two, and number two, UCLA nothing. Bottom five after this break on KWVA. 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 Ranger Station, Ranger speaking. Yeah, hi. I'd like to report a bear sighting. Location? Uh, in the woods, just outside of town. Oh, not surprising. You've got your home. Bears have theirs. Yeah, but see, this wasn't just any bear. This bear was wearing jeans and a hat, as in a smoky bear. Jeans and a hat, that's definitely smoky. What exactly did he have to say? Well, we were about to head home, you know, after having a bonfire. Oh, I can guess where this is going. Right, right. See, Smokey told me the fire wasn't actually out. He said if it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. That's true. Did you know that 9 out of 10 wild fires are caused by humans? That means 9 out of 10 wildfires can be prevented. Wow, no kidding? I'm a forest ranger. We never kid. Sorry. <laughs> that, that was a joke. Oh. If you see someone in danger of starting a wildfire, step in and make a difference because 9 out of 10 wildfires are caused by humans. 
Brought to you by Smokey Bear, the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Only you can prevent wildfires. Hi, this is Zach Bigley, former assistant sports director, and now it's back to Oregon softball here on KWVA Eugene 88.1 FM. Bottom five, Oregon in search of insurance. They lead two to nothing over the number two team in the country, UCLA. And they'll be facing a two-time national player of the year, Rachel Garcia, as Megan Paremo takes a seat after four innings of work. With three hits, two runs, both earned, and struck out four batters and didn't walk anybody. Oregon has had far less success, at least the players on this team, against Rachel Garcia. The success that they've had against UCLA has come against Faremo. And that has been borne out today as well. Last warm-up pitch for Garcia goes to the screen. The Ducks bringing up Pangolinen, Gailey, and Haley Cruz. Garcia sports the double zeros. She currently leads the Pac-12 in earned run average. Jordan. Up. Sorry, Michael, go ahead. Yeah, Jordan, this is no doubt, I think, head coach Noy Perez for UCLA looking to just get a boost, get sort of a momentum swing. You know, Megan Framo pitched really well. I assume that we're going to see more of her throughout this series, but putting Rachel Garcia in the game, you're just hoping to have sort of an electric inning to potentially spark something as the Bruins still are looking for their first run. So here comes Pangolina. Grounded out to third, her only time up in the second. And Rachel Garcia's first toss today. Here comes in her half, a strike at 70. More velocity than Faremo. In 24 innings of work this year for Garcia, she has only given up one earned run. Good for a .29 ERA, 49 Ks, three walks. The 0-1 to Pangolina. She swings and muscles that one foul to the right side off the netting. It's 0-2. The only run Garcia gave up was in the last series that UCLA played against Arizona State. O2 to Pangolina. Rocks back, sends home. High and tight. A ball. It's one and two. And in that game against ASU where she gave up that one earned run, it was actually in the seventh inning when the Bruins had a lead. And ASU got her for a home run. Extended the game. The Bruins won it in the eighth. One, two actually comes in and hits Pangolin in the hit. Hit by pitch, and Oregon has a base runner here to start the fifth inning. That one got away from Garcia, started over the plate, sinking action. Pangolinen wears one. And here comes Hannah Gailey. You suspect this is a sacrifice situation to get a runner in scoring position for Cruz. Let's see if Gailey can come through. Actually, Looks like Morgan might be bringing up a pinch hitter. And the bunt laid down. It actually is Gailey. Perfect bunt. Right back to the circle. Only play the first. She's out there, but Pangolin and scampers over to second. You can hear the round of applause from Jane Sanders. That was a well-executed bunt. It, the small ball is working. As planned, you get a hit by pitch, you get a sacrifice spot, and now you have exactly who you want at the plate to try and get an insurance run. And here comes Haley Cruz. She's faced Garcia nine times in her career. Three hits in those nine ABs, a 333 average. The pitch to Cruz, center cut and call the strike. Pangolinen does have speed on second. You suspect a single scores her. Cruz is only one of two Ducks with a hit against Garcia career. The other being Allie Bunker. The 0-1. Of 
Turner's in. The pitch to Cruz. She checks her swing on a pitch away. And Jordan, the count moves to one and one. I mentioned the shadows earlier, and the shadows have crept up pretty quickly onto Jane Sanders, and now the entire sort of pitcher circle in batter's box is in the shadows, and it's actually a bit more challenging for the UCLA fielders at the moment. Right with the sun in their eyes. Yeah, friendly to the hitters, the fielders, it's a challenge. The 1-1 one, one pitch to Cruz, and she's jammed, fouls it back to the screen, one and two. Yeah, Jordan, I'm not sure really how much of a factor it's going to be, but in between pitches, you can see over at third base with Malaulu over in left field with Gooden, they're shielding their eyes. They're holding their gloves up to their faces all the way up until the pitch. Cruz had three hits last weekend, including a home run to lead off this series. So for one, though she reached on an error today, the one, two. She swings and it's a line drive in the right center. That's gonna score a run. It goes all the way to the wall. Cruz is around second, digging for three. Shouts to the dugout. An RBI triple for Haley Cruz. Scores Payne Lehman easily. The Ducks have a 3-0 lead. And Cruz bests Garcia on a center cut pitch. What a beautiful piece of hitting by Haley Cruz. Just right to right center, and it just kept rolling. I mean, UCLA outfielders were trying to, to cut it off and maybe limit that to being a single or a double, but it rolled all the way to the wall, and Haley Cruz is just so fast that Jordan, I blinked, and before I knew it, she was already sliding into third. Aaliyah Jordan bobbled the ball in right field and went against the wall. Cruz got to third standing, so a double and an error. The Ducks have a runner on third for Tara McGowan. And the pitch. McGowan checks her swing. The appeal, she does go, says Eric Bachor. UCLA, they put Garcia into this game to try and get, well, not into this game, but into the pitcher circle to try and get a spark with the top of their order up next inning, and it has not gone to plan so far. The 0-1 to McGowan. Takes another pitch. Garcia can't handle it, but it's down the middle. Called a strike, nothing in two. McGowan, fielder's choice in the first. A pop-up in the third. It's 0-2. Cruz on third. Ducks leading 3-0. The pitch is nubbed over to short. Play coming to the plate. And they're going to get Cruz there. Perez could have come in, tried to catch that one out of the air. Instead, she let it bounce in front of her because Cruz had to hold to wait and see if it was going to be Kai, in which case she would have had to go back to third. She gets a bad jump coming home, and Perez gets her out 6-2 to two for the second out of the frame. Yeah, Jordan, it's like you said, Cruz couldn't just put her head down and sprint home. You know, she was trying to go on contact, but she kind of had to start running at half speed there, and that obviously cost her. But an interesting decision to even come home in the first place and not just stay at third. Brito, new hitter, takes the ball high and away. It's 1-0 to her. One for two, Brito single to center field. Uh, hanging pitch in the fourth. That got the Oregon rally going in that inning. McGowan's over there on first, the 1-0 coming in. That pitch is in there for a strike. One and one. First career AB for Alyssa Brito against Rachel Garcia. That is the second earned run Garcia has given up this season. A ball and a strike, back and through. Away, two balls and a strike. So a pitcher's duel through three. Oregon gets two in the fourth on the homer by Bunker. It tallied on another here in the fifth and the Bruins have managed just one hit through five and have been held scoreless. Defensively, they've struggled. The 2-1, swing and a miss. Hesitant cut to even the count, and it's 2-2. Two and two.
a pair of errors today for UCLA, and that is something I am sure the coaches in that third base dugout will not be happy about. 2-2, two -two. that one is jammed foul. 2-2, two -two. of course you have some high standards over there in that third base dugout. Kelly Inouye Perez, the head coach in her 15th season, pitching coach Lisa Fernandez. That was a catcher-pitcher combo in the early 90s for UCLA. Won a pair of national championships. The 2-2, swing and a miss. We're right by Brito. Garcia's out of the frame, but not before the Ducks get a run on a hit. There's an error in the frame, and they leave a runner on base as well. They tally on another. It's Oregon three and UCLA nothing. Catch the sixth after a quick break on KWVA Eugene 88.1 FM. KWVA. 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 A programming note for those of you looking for your regularly scheduled DJ. They're currently live on KWVA 2, our online stream, which is available at kwvaradio.org. Here at KWVA, one channel isn't always enough. That's why we have KWVA2. KWVA2 is an online-only stream designed to provide you with even more exciting content, including more live sports. To access the stream and view a schedule, visit our website at kwva.uoregon.edu. Students, when I call the reason for your absences throughout the years, please exit the auditorium without your high school diploma. <clears throat> Too tired, family trip, sick day, starting the holidays early. Starting in the sixth grade, students who miss 18 days or more of school in a year for any reason will fall behind and risk not graduating high school. How many days of school has your child missed this year? Absences add up. Keep track at boostattendance.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Army and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Zach Bigley, former assistant sports director, and now it's back to Oregon softball here on KWVA Eugene 88.1 FM. Great start to this ball game if you are a fan of the green and yellow. The number three Ducks three, the number two Bruins nothing as we enter the sixth inning. And to tell the story with his play-by-play, -play, here's Michael Streit. Thank you, Jordan. Berth Yanez now getting the pitch with a three-run lead. She successfully closed out the win against the Bruins earlier in this season for one of Oregon's biggest wins on the season so far. And the top of the Bruins order steps in with Aliyah Jordan. Here's Yanez, that's gonna be low, ball one. Rachel Garcia came in to pitch, gave up just her second run of the season. I'm not sure, I have to double check if it was an earned run, Jordan, because there was an error. Here's Jordan. That one's popped high to right field. Here comes Cruz settling under it, and that'll be out one. And I think, Michael, they are going to charge that run to Garcia because they ruled that Pangolinen would have scored from second on a double, and it was ruled a double the error was on the play in right field that turned it in to three backs for Cruz. That's just the second earned run given up by Garcia. Here's the first catch to Brianna Perez. It's gonna be a called strike one, 63 miles per hour. I mean, Yanez is a problem for this UCLA lineup. They, they bring up so many lefties. Here's Yanez, 0-1 to Perez. Fouled back for strike number two. We talked about it, Jordan. Yanez has just a three ERA in the first inning, but once she's gotten through that first inning, it has been remarkable efficiency against a lineup that is used to scoring at least four runs in most of the games they've played this season. It's been really, really impressive. She had a no-hit bid going there for a second. It was broken up. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Perez. And <laughs> strike three called. I mean, Frisbee stuff, and if you think about it, if you're a lefty, that's starting at your shoulder, right? You, you hesitate for a second, all of a sudden, it's right down the middle. 
on a breaking pitch. Yanez has struck out a number of hitters looking. That's her third strikeout looking today. Yeah, absolutely. Ridiculous Frisbee there for her seventh of the day. And here's Rachel Garcia. First pitch is gonna be a ball. Rachel Garcia 0 for 2 today at the plate. And as we mentioned, she just gave up her second earned run of the season so far to give the Ducks a 3-0 lead for Yanez to work with. Here's the 1-0. That's going to be on the outside for strike one. Cutting action started in the left-handed hitter's batter, left-handed hitting batter's box, spun back to the corner, couldn't have placed it any better. Yep. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch we talked about. Yanez, not, she doesn't throw faster than everybody else. Tops out at 64, but it's the placement. And the 1-1, one, one. this one to left center field. Tracking it is the center fielder, and that's caught by Pangolinen for out number three. Yanez cruising through another inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. The Ducks lead 3-0, and we will now Send it to Jonah Rosenberg back in the KWVA studio for a quick sports desk update. Thank you, Michael. We are here at the KWVA Sports Studios. My name is Jonah Rosenberg, and you are listening to number three Oregon taking on number two UCLA. Over at Jane Sanders Stadium, the Oregon Ducks lead three to nothing over the number two ranked UCLA Bruins, Brooke Yenez. Got the start today on the mound, and she has been fantastic. In her six innings of work, she has only allowed one hit and recorded seven strikeouts. In other Oregon sports news, the Oregon men's baseball team will be in action tonight at PK Park, taking on the number 21 Oregon State Beavers. It is Robert Alstrom getting the start on the mound for the Ducks. His 2.17 ERA and 2-2 two and two, uh, record on the season is good enough to go up against the Oregon State Beavers. We're going to now send it back over to Jane Sanders Stadium for the last couple innings of Oregon softball taking on number two ranked UCLA. KWVA. 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 Thank you, Jonah and Jordan. As I was listening back to that, all I could think about was what an amazing time it is to be a fan of Oregon athletics. The yep. Oregon baseball team getting underway, their top 25, Oregon softball number three, a great tournament run from both the men's and women's basketball teams, and the Oregon volleyball team ranked number 10 in the country, about to get their NCAA tournament underway next week. Yeah, you can hear, you can feel the juice from these Oregon fans. They've been at home watching, especially during the winter seasons. Of course, the football team winning the Pac-12 championship game in the fall. They're letting out all that energy today. And two just massive roars today. The two-run home run for Bunker and that triple to the fan favorite, Cruz. It's been fun to be a part of this environment. Rachel Garcia still pitching. Maya Felder at the plate. First pitch inside ball one. Maya Felder 0 for 2 today from the DP position. Felder has a 538 average when leading off innings, so she's very comfortable getting rallies started for the Ducks. And here's the 1 0. This one's going to be low for ball two. For Rachel Garcia, a nice even 50 strikeouts and 25 innings pitched on the season so far. The 2-0 pitch to Felder. That's going to be strike one called. And for Garcia, like you said, she wasn't available the last time the Bruins played the Ducks earlier this year when they had their first loss of the season. But she also hasn't been much of a factor so far in this one as the Bruins are scoreless, trailing by three. The 2-1 pitch to Felder. That's one's fouled into the net. Strike two. I mean, it can't be overstated how impressive Oregon has been today. Of course, Yanez, she's gotten her flowers, but this lineup, to get three in five against maybe the two best pitchers in the country, and the two pitchers with the best ERA in this conference, 
remarkable. Swung on and missed, but that's actually going to be fouled. Just barely fouled off by Felderson. I believe she'll remain at the plate. She's, she's going to call time. Go uh, have a quick chat, but still going to be a 2-2 count when we get back to Felder. Yeah, Alyssa Garcia took one off of the protective gear. Found tip that if she hung on to it, it would have been a strikeout. Felder stays alive, though. Good call there, Jordan. So here is the 2-2 now. Nearly struck out Felder for her second of the game. Here's Garcia. That one is a called strike three. It ends up being a drop strike by Garcia, but Garcia picks it up quickly, gets the tag, and it's still going to be a strikeout for Garcia. And here comes Rachel Sid with one out and the base is empty. The shadows continue to creep. I mean, it's still bright blue skies out here. Beautiful weather at Gene Sanders. The sun isn't anywhere near setting, but the shadows have covered most of the stadium while it was all illuminated at the beginning of this one. Here's the first pitch to Sid. Right on the outside, strike one as Garcia regularly getting up to 70 miles per hour with her pitches. The 0-1. Here's the pitch to Sid. This one lightly taps, and it's going to be an easy grab right up the middle to Brianna Perez. So that's a pop out for out number two. Here comes the MVP of the game on the offensive side, Allie Bunker. Single to left field, working a great at bat out for him on the second. Took her yard to left field to get the scoring start in the fourth. See what she has up her sleeve here in the sixth. Absolutely, all of the runs that the Ducks have scored. This was first pitch fouled off. Bunker involved um, in some way. She's uh, quite, it's two terrific at bats back to back because it's going to be, the scoreboard says a 1-0 count on Bunker. Can't trust it. Yeah, can't trust it. <laughs> <laughs> I believe Jordan, I just saw her swing at that pitch. Yeah, right? no, I, I saw it too, I saw it too. Uh, so it's gonna be an 0-1 count to Bunker. And Megan Faremo, I mean, presumably, We'll see more of her in this series as she was uh, taken out after four innings of work. The 0 one pitch right past the third baseman and another base knock for Allie Bunker. What a day. Well, was, I, let me just add something real quick, Michael. Sure. Haley Cruz graduating after this year, right? And I think she deserves recognition as probably the best hitter on this lineup, in this lineup. You can make the argument for Bunker, you can make the argument for Brito. I'm gonna give it to the senior. She, she's been here, she's done that. When she graduates, Allie Bunker, I think, deserves to assume that role. I mean, to go three for three against Paramo and Garcia in a, a, a game of this magnitude is really special, and she is locked in right now for Oregon. You can't ask for a better time for her to be feeling good at the plate. Hey, Jordan, and it's now that the Ducks have scored three runs, it's easy to forget that Faremo was dominating the first few innings of this game. Sure, the Ducks were grinding out some at-bats against her, but she was pitching really well. She was feeling great, and I think in a lot of ways that first single that Bunker got for the Ducks' first hit of the game way back in her first at bat was a tone setter and it really gave this Ducks team a spark. And now she's gonna have a pinch runner come in for her. So Shea Bowden steps in and that's gonna be ball one, 71 miles per hour from Garcia. We have two outs and a runner on first base for the Ducks as Bunker gets pinch run for. It's Valerie Wong at first base. We're in number 99. And the 1-0 pitch to Shea Bowden at the plate here in the bottom of the sixth. That one's gonna be outside for ball number two. Right 
Allie Bunker came into today as the leading RBI getter for the Ducks, and she's grabbed a couple more with her two-run blast earlier. This one up the middle from Bowden, and it's going to get juggled by the shortstop Perez. What would have been an out is going to be an error, the third error of the day for the Brooms. I mean, truly shocking. Truly shocking. That, you know, there have been perhaps some tough hops on this infield today. That was that was a can of corn for Perez. She's one of the best in the conference, best in the country to play. I guarantee you she will tell you that she needs to make that play. Guarantee it. And Oregon gets another free out. And they're going to bring up a pinch hitter in Maddie Hopper. Yeah, here comes Maddie Hopper with a huge moment in this one. Runners on first and second. You're going to get another pinch runner for Bowden at first. We'll get you that player in a moment. Two outs. There's a bit of a stoppage in the action. We're going to have the Garcias in the circle. Catcher Alyssa Garcia and pitcher Rachel Garcia talk about their strategy here for Hopper as she gets ready. A chance to add to an already 3-0 lead for the Oregon Ducks. Well, I think the, the strategy here is, you know, be yourself if you're Rachel Garcia. You've been in a, a number of high leverage spots, made a good pitch to get out of the inning. Okay, Perez bobbled it. Now I think the mindset has to be, let me pick my teammate up. That's right. Here's Hopper, first pitch. Swung on, fouled into the net, and it's strike one. And like you said, third error for the Bruins, and you could argue that those were three not just three sort of close plays, but those are three just misses, just sort of mental errors by the Bruins defense. And in a matchup like this, number two against number three, you can't afford those. 0-1 oh, pitch to Hopper. That's going to be strike two called on Maddie Hopper. So Rachel Garcia, she's definitely trying to pick up her team here and still get out of this inning and try and do her best to make sure that this error doesn't count towards anything. I mean, despite the fact that there have been three errors by the Bruins, all three of the Ducks' runs have been earned, two of them coming the way of a bunker homer. 0-2 pitch, ball one, and the third run in the bottom of the fifth for Oregon came off the back of a Haley Cruz double. Maddie Hopper looking to add, and she is at the plate. She's already got 26 at-bats on the year. 1-2, fouled again. And Jordan, Maddie Hopper, as we got a nice grab out there in the stands, Maddie Hopper doesn't really get many starts, but you can see that the fact she has 26 at-bats, she is a go-to pinch hitter. Yeah, pinch hit four times last weekend against Oregon State. Didn't get a hit, though. Kind of in a mini slump over her last seven. All right, trying to break the mini slump against Garcia. 1-2. And that's going to be strike three called to end the inning. Well, the Ducks ended up with one hit, one error, and two runners left on base, but no runs for them in the sixth. Six innings down, Oregon up 3-0 over number two UCLA. And after this short break, Brooke Yanez will try to close it out in the seventh. You're listening to KWVA Eugene, 88.1 FM. KWVA. 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 Would it be crazy if you just stopped everything, packed your bags and left for a week, a month, a year? What if you left for two years? Would people think you'd lost your mind? What if you were going far away to help in a village on the edge of the Gobi Desert? A village crowded with Buddhist temples, not skyscrapers. A place where there isn't a word for recluse, but a thousand words for community. Would it be crazy to go 5,000 miles from home? To spend time with people the rest of the world only reads about? To build libraries and fill them with stories? Prepare a meal with food you helped grow? To teach children and learn a thing or two about yourself? Would that be crazy? Peace Corps. Life is calling. How far will you go? To find out more, call 1-800-424-8580 or visit PeaceCorps.gov. Hey, this is Joey McMurray, broadcaster for the Oregon IMG Sports Network and former sports director. But he's wearing Adidas pants. You can't do that. And you're listening to KWVA Eugene 88.1. 
Welcome back. The Ducks are three outs away from taking first place in the Pac-12. And here's my buddy, Jordan Brenner. Thanks, Michael. All right, folks, here we go. Delaney Wiz, Maya Brady, Alyssa Guerrera. And the first pitch from Yanez is in there and called a strike. Rather, Garcia, Alyssa Garcia is third up for the Bruins. Yanez is searching for her eighth complete game effort of the season. So far, she has had perhaps the best start of her career. It's 0-1. And the pitch is lined into left field. Going after it and leaning down to get it is Gailey. That ball was diving quickly, a hard line drive. Gailey had to show off her flexibility, went into a crouch and snagged it about two feet high above the ground for the first out of the frame. Jordan, we talked about how UCLA has two of the best pitchers in the country in Faremo and Garcia, but when it comes to the Pac-12 Pitcher of the Year Award, Brooke Yanez is absolutely saying, hey, don't forget about me. The lone hit for UCLA came in the fifth inning. And here's Maya Brady. She checks her swing, the pitch high and away. She's 0 for 2 with a strikeout today. And that one hit, Michael, in the fifth, ricocheted off of Yanez. It went to second to Bunker. She threw it about him, and Washington beat it out by maybe a half step. The 1 0 pitch, she swings and fouls it back to the screen. They even up the count at one. So that one for hit for UCLA, which, by the way, the Oregon fans wanted to be called an out, not that we have to trust them. <laughs> it was barely a hit. It's been that type of day for Yanez in the circle. One and one with an out to Brady. The Ducks up three to nothing. The pitch, a check swing. A little bit of movement towards the inside corner of the plate, but it misses and it's two and one. Yeah, if these Oregon fans were umpiring this game, we would be watching a Brooke Yanez no-hitter still intact, which is just insane to say against this UCLA lineup. Two balls and a strike to Brady. Deal, swing, a miss, drop ball. And the bottom drops out of it. It's two and two. The last time Yanez had this situation with a lead against UCLA, she got into some trouble in the seventh inning. I believe the bases were loaded at one point, but she found her way to get out of it and get the Ducks a win. Here's the 2-2. A swing and a chopper foul. Brady stays alive. Yanez has only given up one hit and one walk. Put that next to her seven strikeouts. Number three, Oregon. Number two, UCLA. A win tonight, and we have a new leader in the Pac-12 Conference. 2-2 pitch. Swinging a line drive into center field. Smoked by Brady. And she turns over two into one for three. Well, Jordan, I think this is an appropriate time to mention that Yanez, she's had a 3.5 ERA when it's the first inning of a whole weekend. She's been pretty great in the middle part of the game, but when it's the seventh inning of a game that is still close, basically a save situation when she needs to close the door, she also has a 3.5 ERA. Bruins dug out with a little life now with a runner on first for Garcia. She swings at the first pitch and fouls it off of McGowan behind home. It goes back to the screen in its own one. This UCLA lineup and this UCLA team, no strangers, two big moments. Yeah, Jordan, my point is that if UCLA gets something going here and maybe gets the bases loaded, gets a rally going, Yanez isn't gonna be phased by this. She's gotten out of this jam many times already in this season. Redshirt freshman takes a drop ball that is in there for a strike. It's 0-2. Plays catcher, plays first base from Chula Vista, California. In protect mode, the 0-2 with an out. Here in the top of the seventh. Now the deal. Wasting a pitch high and away. It's one and two. Garcia gets on. The Bruins will bring up the tying runner 
in this 3-0 game. The one-two from Yanez. A swing and a miss. Buries a pitch down low, and she cuts over top. The eighth K of the game for Yanez. She's one out away. And the final hope for UCLA, sorry, Michael, is Kinsley Washington. If Yanez finishes it here, strikeout or not, you can expect a standing ovation from this Jane Sanders crowd. They are not on their feet, at least not yet. The first pitch to Washington. There's that Frisbee once more. She is really feeling good with that pitch. Washington doesn't even think about it until home one. 26 and two Oregon, 19 and one UCLA. The Bruins down to their last out, the 0-1 is in the air to short. Brito grabs it. Game one to Oregon. Three nothing final and a complete game effort from the ace of the staff, Brooke Yanez. Seven innings, two hits, eight Ks and a shutout against the number two team in the country. And the fans now giving the standing ovation to the Ducks, the new number one team in the Pac-12 Conference. The two run home run in the fourth by Bunker. The RBI double by Cruz in the fifth. And the shutdown effort from Brick Yanez. Oregon hands Megan Faremo her second loss of the season and her third career loss against UO. What an evening at the chain. And that, Michael, is how you start off the biggest series of the season. Yeah, that is how you take control of the Pac-12 Conference. The Oregon Ducks will wake up tomorrow morning first place in the Pac-12. A truly incredible performance from the entire team. There was just no mistakes from Oregon today. They played mistake-free softball. And the truth is, they could have beaten anyone in the country with how they played today. Two on deck tomorrow, one more Sunday. Right now, Oregon is 27 and two. The Bruins move to 19 and two. And their only two losses this year have come at the hands of Oregon. There were critics entering this weekend who pointed out that Oregon's strength of schedule and their RPI didn't quite match up with their number three ranking. I think it's safe to say that Oregon proved those critics wrong this evening. A lot more coming on the post game show. We'll play you highlights and give you our final thoughts. Oregon, three nothing over UCLA. Yanez, 14 and 0 on the season. More on the other side of this break on your voice of Oregon softball, KWVA Eugene. There's a new sheriff in town, Oregon, the number one team in the Pac-12 Conference after a 3-0 win over UCLA. Brooke Yanez, 14-0 now this season, a complete game, dominant effort, seven innings, two hits, eight Ks. And a big time win for the Ducks before they play two tomorrow. Now let's play you some of the sounds of this game on today's highlight show. So the Bruins, came to the plate in the first inning. And this is a Bruins lineup that was really dangerous in the first innings this season, having scored in 14 of 20 of them entering today's game. That's 38 runs, a plus 33 differential. Brooke Yanez was having none of that. She came out really strong in the first. She hit the first batter she saw, then she struck out Brianna Perez. Then came up Rachel Garcia, the two-time national player of the year. And here's how that matchup ended. Burst onto the scene, a 464 hitter with four homers, six runs batted in. And she swings and misses at the 0-2, breaking below the zone. That was the second K for Yanez of the game, second of eight. 
to then retire Delaney Wiz to strand a Bruin runner on base. Go over to the fourth inning, still a scoreless game. The Bruins had a runner on second after Brianna Perez walked and got over to second. Maya Brady was the last hope for the Bruins. That's Tom Brady's niece here in the fourth inning. And, well, Michael Streit did a great job calling what happened next. And the 0-2 again. Called strike three. And the 2 that, again. That ended the top of the fourth inning. And, well, Oregon, they took that in stride. In the fourth inning, Alyssa Brito led off, worked a great at-bat and singled on a laser beam to center. She advanced on a fielder's choice, or rather, she was nabbed later in the inning. Uh, she was exchanged, I should say, for Carlson after uh, a 4-6 fielder's choice. Rachel Sid popped out, and then with two outs in the inning, Allie Bunker, the biggest swing of the game with this big fly to left field. With two outs. The one-two pitch from Faremo to Bunker. Swung on into left field. And listen to that crowd. It's gone. A two-out, two-run home run for Allie Bunker. Oregon had a 2-0 lead then. And Bowden struck out looking to end that frame. Then the Ducks came back in the fifth inning. Yanez continued to be dominant. Gave up her first hit to break up the no-hitter but got out of the inning from there. Then in the fifth inning, Oregon's offense wasn't done. A leadoff hit by pitch, a fielder's choice to get Pangolin into second base, and then Haley Cruz came up and delivered the Ducks an insurance run on an opposite field extra base hit. So for one, though she reached on an error today, the one, two. She swings and it's a line drive in right center. That's gonna score a run, it goes all the way to the wall. Cruises around second, digging for three. Shouts to the dugout. An RBI triple for Haley Cruz. Scores Pangol Lehman easily. The Ducks have a 3-0 lead. And Cruz bests Garcia on a center cut pitch. That she did, and that's all Oregon needed. 3-0. Then after that, it was just waiting and seeing how good Yanez's outing was gonna be. And in the seventh, she came out. She got Delaney Wiz to line out to left field. Then Maya Brady hit a single to center. So there was a runner on first. And Alyssa Garcia came to the plate, the Bruins catcher. And Yanez got her eighth strike out of the game. The one, two from Yanez. A swing and a miss. Billy's a pitch down low, and she cuts over top. The eighth K of the game for Yanez. She's one out away. Yeah, let's play you that final out. As Oregon took down number two UCLA, Kinsley Washington, the second baseman for the Bruins, against the lefty Yanez. Here's what it sounded like. The Bruins down to their last out. The 0-1 is in the air to short. Brito grabs it. Game one to Oregon. Three nothing final. And a complete game effort from the ace of the staff, Brooke Yanez. Seven innings, two hits, eight Ks, and a shutout against the number two team in the country. Just a special performance by the entire team and Brooke Yanez, Michael, your initial thoughts. Wow, Jordan, I have been sitting here and just trying to process what Brooke Yanez just did to the number two team in the country, and I'm still astounded. I think that first inning was huge, and that first inning ending with a ball that could have been an RBI hit, instead bouncing off of her shin straight to Maya Felder was so huge, and it just, the confidence got better. I mean, there's no doubt that Yanez got better and better as the game went on and just became even more terrifying and I expect to see more of her as this weekend progresses and in the meantime Jordan Oregon this would be a very different game if they didn't have Allie Bunker in the lineup today it was incredible what a leader Bunker was at the plate with the two-run blast that broke the tie game a really hard-fought you know single earlier in the game for their first hit of the game 
against Faremo, and then she just rounded it out by going three for three. Absolutely incredible performance. And it's amazing, right? Allie Bunker's been, uh, you know, almost an automatic for the number three spot or the number four spot in the lineup. Melissa Lombardi, right, she pushed a button today. She put Allie Bunker at six, and, you know, maybe it was random. It probably was, but the game came to her, and she delivered in a big way. The game also came to Haley Cruz in the fifth inning with that triple, and, you know, the crowd was loud for Allie Bunker's two-run shot in the fourth inning, Michael, but in the fifth, the crowd favorite, the fan favorite on Haley Cruz day at the Jane, she came through the uh, double and advanced the third on that error to give Oregon that insurance. And I think that was the loudest roar since, well, pre-pandemic times here at the Jane. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, they were pretty loud for that bunker home run, but they just hit another level when Haley Cruz does something. You could hear that all the way out in Hayward Field. That was quite the performance, and it was just excellent to have Jane Sanders Stadium at its loudest and to have the fans back at Collegiate Softball. The last time I was doing a broadcast with you, Jordan, I was sitting amongst the cutouts, but it really was just us. There wasn't any fans, and now I got to walk to the ballpark and enjoy this game with hundreds and hundreds of other uh, spectators. We're likely to see Brooke Yanez at some point tomorrow. You know, maybe she goes game one. We're definitely going to see Ferremo and Garcia tomorrow. Tell me about what this game does for Oregon tomorrow. You get your third win over Ferremo in the last three years as a ball club. Many of the players, of course, were playing for this team in 2019, but they get their second win this season. And then against Garcia, she'd only given up one earned run entering this game the entire season. They get one off her as well. That, that's got to bode well for how they sleep tonight heading into the doubleheader tomorrow. Yeah, Jordan, they're going to go to sleep happy tonight. And you talked about this is a young team. Only two of them had ever faced Rachel Garcia before. And they came into this series with a businesslike attitude. As crazy as it may seem, they played this game like they didn't care who they were facing. They just went and they executed their game plan. They did what they do. They weren't intimidated at all by, you know, the all the accolades that were against them on the other side, all these incredible UCLA players that are going to be Olympians. They didn't care. They went out, they played their game, and it's a game changer. We're going to see more probably of Garcia and Faremo and Yanez. And heading into this series, if you talk to Pac-12 coaches, uh, they'd probably tell you that if they had to win a game, they would give the ball to Faremo or Garcia. And while that still may be the case for most Pac-12 coaches, they were all watching what Brooke Yanez did tonight, and they're going to keep watching her throughout the season because she is making a name for herself. Final line from the Jane, no runs, two hits, three errors for UCLA, three runs, five hits, no errors for the victorious Oregon Ducks. Ducks 6-1 and one in Pac-12 play, 27-2 and two overall. The Bruins dropped their first Pac-12 game. They are now 3-1, and 19-2 and two all together. Michael, any final thoughts before we get out of here, before tomorrow's doubleheader? We're not going to have you tomorrow, but we'll have you back on Sunday for the call. Two important games tomorrow, no doubt about it. Yeah, as much as this is a huge win for the Ducks, they are going to wake up tomorrow first place in the Pac-12. There's more games to come, and UCLA is a team that's going to respond. I don't expect to see them get shut out, you know, again tomorrow because this is a lineup that does – so, so much damage that it was quite uncharacteristic uh, for their offensive performance today. You know that UCLA is going to bring a better squad to the park tomorrow. They're probably going to play better. They're probably going to hit better. They're going to make less errors in the field. So if Oregon wants to win again, they're going to have to work even harder than they did today. And they had an almost mistake-free performance today. So it just doesn't get any better in the Conference of Champions. I'm so excited to listen to you and Bill Breaker tomorrow, and I'm so excited to be back here Sunday. You can listen to that broadcast. 1 o'clock p.m., the first game against UCLA. The second game scheduled for 4 p.m. It'll likely take place 30 minutes following the conclusion of game one. Thank you so much 
for joining us for this big time game at the Jane. The Oregon Ducks three, the UCLA Bruins nothing. Thanks so much to everybody who made this broadcast possible. To Jonah Rosenberg back in our KWVA Sports Studios for his terrific production. And to my broadcast partner today, Michael Streit, this is Jordan Brenner telling you to get some sleep. We got a long day tomorrow right here at the Jane, 1 p.m., 4 p.m. You can catch both of those calls right here on KWVA Eugene 88.1 FM. For now, let's send it back to our regularly scheduled programming. Have a great night. KWVA. KWVA. KWVA.